Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So yesterday um, we ended up cutting some old corrugated metal and me and Rebecca got that put all the way down this wall. That pretty much finishes it out except there's going to be some wood trim that's going to go in between there later. But the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to put up a lumber storage rack back on that end of the wall. So before we covered this up we did put some vertical supports in this wall to mount the lumber rack on. And what we're going to be using today is a Bora wall rack. And this is supposed to hold 660 pounds. And you're supposed to be able to mount these. I think it comes with basically two racks that you can mount four to six feet apart. But to me, that is too far apart. Um, I don't want the lumber to sag in the middle. So I ended up buying two sets of these. So there's a total of four of these we're going to end up putting on the wall. And they're going to be every two feet apart up here. So I've already got one of them put together. Show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like after it's put together. And that looks a little funny. Um, but basically what it is, is these just slide over the top of that. There's a screw that's right there and that just slides down till it hits that screw. And that, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not much to putting this together. And then there's gonna be some rubber pieces that go on the backside and you're gonna bolt through those. So I've got some quarter inch lag bolts we're gonna to use to, to put this on the wall, but I've got one more set of these to put together. So just find the side with the most holes and then slide these on. One that's got a little notch. There's a little notch actually in one of the, in the one side that faces down. That's what sets on the screw. Total of six of these on each one of these. And I just, pushes up against it, that's it. Really not much to this. Very simple design. All right, just like that. So that took me all of about, what, 30 seconds to put that together. Fairly quick. It'll take me longer to put it on the wall. All right. So I've got some three and a half inch long lag screws, quarter inch diameter. And basically we'll put that through that. And that's how we're gonna attach it to the wall. All right, put a mark in the wall where the bottom screw is gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-drill that one so that we can get started easier. Well, I'm trying to do this without all the hardware falling off, but I'm not being very graceful at it. Like that. Oh, there we go. Bottom one's tight to the wall. Now we're just gonna try to level this up and get it exactly plumb, I guess, before we tighten the other two. There we go. First one is on the wall. Well, I'm not gonna try to put all the hardware in this time, just the bottom screw. Hopefully we can squeeze the rest of it in. All right, so here, I'm basically gonna put it 
and try to make sure these are perfectly level with each other. Which actually is not very easy because if you try to grab these, they just slide. <laughs> so it's actually kind of hard to hold on to. Well, to me, that looks level. That thing's hard to hold. It is, it's very awkward. All right, we got all four of the racks mounted to the wall. And before, one pair of these would hold 660 pounds. So that was 110 pounds per level. So now that we've got four going across here, that's in theory, you could put 220 pounds per level, but you're never gonna get that much weight on here. There's only six inches between these. So this is overkill as far as weight goes, weight handling goes. But according to the instructions, you could mount it either four feet apart from each other, which is like right here and here, or you could mount them six feet apart from each other, which would have been the two outer ones, which I think that's just too wide and your boards would sag. So I decided to do the four. Um, it is overkill, but I think it's gonna work out good. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and load this stuff up. We got a bunch of lumber filling up one of these garage bays. We're gonna see how much of it we can stack on here. Well, you can see we almost ran out of room already. So we've got some old uh, treated lumber on top and then we've got a bunch of this. It's like a rough sawn pine. I bought this at an auction. I bought a whole stack of this. And I've been using this for trim here in the workshop. So hopefully as we do trim and continue to finish this area, this will all get used up and free up a little bit of space on here. So you can see there's some 10 foot boards that are sticking out up here at the top, not supported. But the plan is I'm going to put a shelf bracket, just a simple shelf bracket here. And I'm actually going to put another one over here. And then I should be able to support up to 12 foot long. So that's, that's the, the original plan. So this was designed to hold eight foot boards here and up to 12 at the top. And I think it's going to work out fairly well. I just need to get to a home improvement store and buy a couple shelf brackets. So over the years I've had people comment on my sawhorses. Um, and that I should buy a good set. So these are like the cheap metal brackets and I've got like four of these sawhorses and you can see like how wobbly that is. It actually even moves like side to side as well. Um, very rickety wobbly sawhorses. And I've had these for like five years. I think I put them together when we were building our house. Well, I finally broke down since I was doing all this plywood on the walls, I finally broke down and bought a good set of sawhorses. So I ended up buying a set of these tough built sawhorses. It's a metal sawhorse. This is kind of the new design that everybody makes, but uh, this holds 1100 pounds. And this is the, the C500 model. This is actually the, the cheaper one um, that you can buy. I think these were $37 a piece. And so far, they seem to work pretty good. They seem to be pretty sturdy. But the thing that uh, 
that I liked about it was the idea of being able to put a two by four in here and connect two of these together. So you could basically connect two sawhorses together, make a frame. You could put your plywood on top of it. You could cut through it and the plywood would still be supported by that frame. It wouldn't fall in and working with all this plywood, I think that this was the way to go. And um, these do fold up. Um, the legs go up inside, inside of them, and it stores a little bit smaller. So once it's stored, it looks like this. And uh, so far I've just used it for like a week and I've been pretty happy with it. I almost did this last year. I researched these last year. I didn't end up doing it. I ended up buying like a cheap set of plastic sawhorses and they're only like two feet wide. And um, now that I've bought these, I wish I would have bought them last year. So uh, definitely with all the plywood that we're doing in here, finishing this workshop, um, I think that these are definitely going to be a good set of sawhorses to use, mess messing with all this plywood. Well, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, just wanted to show we did get the wall finished, all the metal on the wall. The only thing that we're lacking now is just some trim boards. And then we've got our lumber storage rack done. And the reason that it's this high is because we, we plan on being able to lean sheets of plywood, four by eight sheets of plywood. We can lean against the wall here underneath it. And then that is lumber storage from the floor all the way up above the window. So that you can store a lot of lumber in that area. And you can see, if you look back here, you can see we've continued on around the room, putting up plywood. You see we've got an access hole right there. That is to get into the attic space. We're gonna build like a insulated panel that'll fit over that. And if we ever need to get inside that, that little roof area, we can still do that if need be. And we're doing the same thing on that side. Just trying to think ahead. Hopefully I never need to get in there, but it, if I do, I can still get in there later on. So I did end up buying another 12 sheets of plywood to put on the wall. We've got to sand and stain that and we're gonna to continue to go around the room, but I'm probably not gonna show that on video. The next video we're probably going to show is going to be the ceiling. So we're going to put in blown in cellulose in the ceiling and uh, we're going to try to put like 12 inches in there. So we'll be prepping everything for that and then blowing the insulation in. That's probably going to be the next video. And then once this is all closed in, we'll, we'll be finally able to heat this space. And then we can start working. Once we can heat this space and it's all closed in, we can start working on the Alice Chalmers tractor here. Probably looks funny in the video. That is a tractor sitting there. It just doesn't have any wheels or anything. The whole back end's torn apart. And hopefully we'll get back to working on that, getting the, everything put back together and get that running again. So that is a winter project working on the Alice. And um, we just need to get everything closed in where I can heat the place. So that's what we're working toward. And uh, hopefully we'll get there over the next month. But that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.